Hello everyone. Today we are talking about the Invisible Internet Project or I2P. I draw mainly from one article by NordVPN which I will link in the description below. First, what is I2P? I2P is an anonymous peer-to-peer -peer network that is designed to protect you from surveillance and online monitoring. Your traffic is scattered to prevent a third party from intercepting it. I2P also provides an encrypted way into the dark web. You might now wonder, isn't this just Tor? And if you don't wonder that, you might want to watch my video on Tor and see how it works. The link to the video is in the description below. While the goals are the same, I2P and Tor are different in how they achieve this goal. First, let's look at how I2P works. As previously stated, I2P is a decentralized P2P network, which means, just like Tor, its operation relies on the community. The traffic is end-to-end -end encrypted, meaning that no one in the middle is able to see it and the traffic is routed via the P2P network. This network is distributed all around the world and consists of over 50,000 devices. The fact that your traffic is dispersed around the world makes it difficult for anyone to spy on you. There are a couple of reasons why I2P is secure. I already mentioned that everything is end-to-end -end encrypted using public key cryptography. I2P works by unidirectional tunnels. This means that incoming and outgoing traffic are separated, thus providing more privacy. Another main difference to Tor is the routing. Whereas it's called onion routing in Tor, it is called garlic routing in I2P. The name stems from the fact that the original message is divided into smaller messages called cloves. These sub-messages all travel separately through the network to their destination. This makes it hard for a man in the middle to obtain the whole message for traffic analysis. Let's look at some pros and cons of I2P. Its main advantage is that it's a highly secure network since every message is end-to-end -end encrypted. This protects your traffic from hackers, government surveillance and so on. Next, I2P uses packet switching. That means that through the distribution of messages into clubs, the load is balanced across different peers which makes the performance more efficient. Even if one node is not functioning properly, other peers can take their place. Finally, and most importantly, I2P grants privacy to its users. Just like a VPN, all traffic is routed through tunnels that are impenetrable to your ISP and therefore the government or other surveilling parties. Now to some cons. First, I2P is not exactly easy to use, especially compared to Tor, where you can just download the Tor browser bundle and you're done. Next, users have to be logged in in order for the peer-to-peer -peer system to work. This is similar to Tor, as you also have to have running exit nodes and bridges all the time. Another major disadvantage against Tor, but one that might be solved in the future, is its small user base. Therefore, attacks are theoretically more likely, since there are less nodes you need to compromise. Now let's finally look at the major differences between Tor and I2P. First, I2P is more decentralized compared to Tor, through its P2P architecture. Next, I2P uses garlic routing, which is fundamentally different to Tor's onion routing. Whereas onion routing means that each router peels off a layer of the onion, garlic routing means that the message is divided into encrypted parts, which makes it harder for hackers to spy on the traffic. Hence, I2P sends the message parts, the cloths, through different routes, whereas Tor uses only one route for the whole message. To summarize and to conclude, I2P is an anonymous P2P network that uses garlic routing. Garlic routing means that the messages are divided into small parts that each are end-to-end -end encrypted and have a unique path through the P2P network to the destination. I2P uses unidirectional tunnels, meaning the path from the user to the destination is different than the path of the answer. Currently, there are only 50,000 devices running I2P, which is also its main downside. Thanks for watching this video. I hope this video sparked your interest in I2P and you might consider running it yourself. If you liked the video, don't forget to subscribe and leave a comment so that others can find it as well. See you in the next video.